First phase of Bisho Ijtama starts amid tight security. Devotees offer Juma prayer. BNP calls to continue blockade amid Bisho Ijtama. Government to compensate people, vehicles if vandalized. 2015 to be milestone in world history, Hasina writes in Europe magazine. Those were the headlines. This is ATN News. Good evening, viewers. I'm Shadab Mahmoud with the News at 7. The first phase of the 50th Bisho Ijtama got started in the capital through Amboyan after Fazar prayer today, Friday. Thousands of devotees converged in Tongi on the banks of River Turag for complete submission to the Almighty Allah. One of the most significant events of the Bisho Ijtama is to offer Juma prayer. Thousands of devotees offered Juma prayers at the Ijtama ground. The first phase would come to an end through Akhari Munajat on the 11th of January. The second phase would begin from the 16th of January after a four-day gap. The devotees have already settled down in their allocated camps known as Kitta. 5,000 devotees from 50 foreign countries are taking part in this year's Ijtama. The devotees were seen coming to the Ijtama ground by bus, truck, train and launch. The human sea of devotees would continue until the Akari Munajat. However, the devotees complained they were suffering a lot in reaching the Istama venue due to the blockade. Meanwhile, devotees in the capital were suffering to get vehicles for the Itsama ground. As the number of buses was few due to blockade, the devotees had to compete with one another to get buses. Even after getting into a bus, many failed to get a seat. Several people who had the desire to take part in the Itsama could not do so due to non-availability of vehicles because of the blockade. Many questioned why a party carrying religious ideology did such things. Surprised at the non-withdrawal of blockade, even on the first day of the Ijtama, many termed it as a wrong political decision of the BNP. They said the top BNP leader would have to take responsibility for the happenings. People were moving towards their destinations on Friday, ignoring the BNP called blockade. Pressure of passengers was seen at the Mahakali bus terminal in Dhaka on Friday, although it was a weekend. Long route buses left the terminal. Similar scenario was seen at other bus terminals as well. Law enforcement was on high alert to check any untoward incidents due to which transport workers were confident. Meanwhile, the vegetable traders at Kauron Bazar in Dhaka were in trouble as they brought vegetables from different areas of the country. Consumers, however, were happy as the prices were quite low. A Dhaka court has granted a five-day remand for Shamsher Mobin Chaudhry in a case related to the attack on Chobi Bishash MP filed with the Shabak police station. Police sought a 10-day remand for the BNP vice chairman after producing him before the Dhaka Metropolitan Magistrate Imdadul Haq Milan's court at 3.30 p.m. on Friday. Following a hearing, the court granted him a five-day remand. Police arrested Shamsher Mobin on Thursday night on charges of attacking Chobi Bishash. BNP Chairperson Begum Khaladazia is still at our Gulshan office. Police removed the lock from the main gate of the office on Thursday. However, additional poli police forces remained deployed around the office as in the last couple of days. BNP leaders and activists were not found entering the office to meet Begum Zia on Friday morning. Meanwhile, Ruhul Kabir Rizvi urged BNP men to continue the blockade with boldness and strength, even amid the Bisho Ijtama. The BNP Joint Secretary General made the call while addressing a press conference in the Banani Thana Unit BNP office on Friday morning.
The BNP call blockade is underway for the fourth consecutive day on Friday. At least 50 BNP men were arrested. Ten blockaders were injured, two of them with bullets in a clash with police in Ullapara of Shirajganj. Pickets set fire to a pickup van in front of fishery office of Gornodi and an auto rickshaw in front of Batajor police station in Barisal at dawn Friday. At least seven people were injured in a clash between police and blockaders at Sheikh Para Bazar in Shoilokupa of Jhinaida. Police charged batons and fired tear gas shells to disperse a Shibir BNP procession on the Kushtia Islamic University campus. Blockaders vandalized seven vehicles near the Shikda Road area of Raipur of Lokhipur on Thursday night. Apart from this, blockaders vandalized two motorbikes in the Hafizia Madrasa area. BNP men brought out processions in other districts including Nator, Chatpur and Takurgao in support of the blockade. The government will compensate anyone injured or any vehicle vandalized during the blockade, says Asad Zaman Khan Kamal. The state minister for home made the comment after a meeting with transport owners in the capital's Maza Road area in Mirpur on Friday afternoon. He asked all transport owners to ply their vehicles. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina declared owners would be compensated if vehicles were affected. Also present at the meeting, LGRD State Minister Moshe Rahman Ranga said the plying of vehicles would be monitored from helicopters across the country. The government should impose a ban on blockade as a political program, says Shuranjit Shen Gupta. The Awami League Advisory Council member made the comment at a discussion at the Diploma Engineers Institution Auditorium in Dhaka on Friday. He said everything would have an end and it was now time to declare blockade illegal and undemocratic. It was tantamount to declaring war against the country and should not be allowed to continue. Jamuni hui na keno. Shop bondhu ke chay. Tai shabash shathe din rat kotha be ek poisha proti second day. Eight. Khaladazia has now declared war against the people after failing to involve them in movement, says Hasanul Haq Inu. The Information Minister made the remark at a biennial conference of Kulna District and Metropolitan Chapter JSD. He at the time said the BNP chairperson had hurt the sentiments of the devotees by continuing blockade amid the Bisho Ijtama despite repeated requests not to do so. The year 2015 would be a milestone in history, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina wrote in her column in the New Year's edition of Europe's prestigious magazine, New Europe. More than 75 statesmen, politicians, intellectuals, political analysts wrote columns in the magazine along with Sheikh Hasina. Under the title, 2015 is going to be a milestone, Sheikh Hasina wrote her optimistic views about the world and highlighted various achievements including progress in education and women empowerment in Bangladesh. Creating a poverty-free world should be the next target of Millennium Development Goals after 2015, she wrote in her column. Since Europe is the main market for Bangladesh's export products, publication of Sheikh Hasina's article in an influential European magazine is getting importance. Wherein lies the real obstacle to resolving the current political crisis centering the January 5th polls is the question. The reason concerned quarters feel is the rigid attitude of the two sides. Awami League thinks there are three obstacles to dialogue. However, the pro-BNP teacher Dr. Sadat Hosen thinks there is no alternative to dialogue. However, the ruling Awami League is convinced it is a movement on BNP chairperson Begum Khaladzia's family issue and not the BNP movement. Dr. Sadat, who had recently met the BNP chief, feels 
peace would not return until and unless midterm polls were held. The Awami League says there is no scope for that for three reasons. The two top leaders do not want any anarchy or clash in the country. The two always advise each other to work for democracy. The latest official statements of the two leaders also highlighted the same. Even then, violent clashes are taking place on the streets. Political analysts say the two leaders have to really come forward to resolve the current political crisis by showing real responsibility towards the people and discarding the tangle of statements. Now a short break. We'll be back soon with... Political stability needed for advancement, says Atyur. Pakistan court grants bail to Mumbai attack mastermind Lagvi. You're watching ATN News. This is the News at 7. Maintain political stability, says Dr. Ati Rahman. The Bangladesh Bank governor made the call to politicians at a seminar of the Bangladesh Economic Society at Engineers Institute in Ramna on Friday. Dr. Atir at the time said Bangladesh's economy had progressed far in the past five years. The people of Bangladesh are more innovative than the people of any other country. And that was why two and a half lakh new entrepreneurs have been created over the past five years. Bangladesh would advance far only if political stability was maintained. Two people were killed in a gunfight in the Shundarbans. The CEO of RAB 8, Lieutenant Colonel Faridur Aram, told the media the gunfight took place at around 9 a.m. in the Morapashu area of the Shundarbans during a regular patrol of RAB on Friday. All of a sudden, pirates hiding there started shooting at the RAB patrol. RAB also fired back in self-defense. Two pirates were killed after a half an hour gunfight. RAB recovered arms and ammo from the spot. Eight people were killed in separate road mishaps and a child was electrocuted in the capitals Gulshan, Shahjatpur and Dhamrai on Friday. A night guard commander on Newmarket Traders Association Abu Tahir was run over by a bus while he was returning home on a bicycle at Shahjatpur of Gulshan. A rickshaw puller died on the spot and a rickshaw passenger and Abu Tahir died after being taken to the hospital. Four people were killed in a crash between a bus, truck and a private car in Dhamrai. Three people sustained severe injuries in the mishap. According to police sources, the mishap occurred at around 9 a.m. The private car passengers were going to the Tongi Itsama ground. Meanwhile, another person was killed in road mishap in Tangail and an eight-year-old boy electrocuted in Modanpur of Nairnganj. ATN News Magura correspondent Champak Roy's funeral was held at Shad Doha cremation ground in Magura town on Friday. He died at the Delta Medical College Hospital in Dhaka on Thursday afternoon. Magura Press Club, District Lawyers Association and different organizations condoled the death. He was suffering from cancer for a whole year. Champak Roy worked for Daily Ajkir Kagoj and some local newspapers. He started working for ATN Bangla and ATN News since their inception. He left behind his wife and a daughter. Now news from around the world. Yet again, a Pakistan civil court granted bail to 2611 mastermind and Lashkar e Toiba operative Zakir Rahman Lagvi in a kidnapping case against a surety of Rs 2 lakhs. While Lagvi's bail application was being heard in the court, his counsel Rizwan Abbasi argued that his client was wrongly booked in a six years old kidnapping case. Abbasi stated that the case was registered against his client to detain him on the pressure of India after the anti-terrorism court granted him bail following a six-year delay in his trial. 
However, the police and the capital administration authorities said that his detention is likely to be extended either by issuing another MPO or seeking his custody for investigation into other cases registered against him. Maitripala Srishena, the 63-year-old career politician who is now Sri Lanka's president-elect, knows how to keep his cards close to his chest. While he was still a health minister in the government of incumbent Mahinda Rajapaksa, he had dinner with the man he had just ousted the eve of the launch of his surprise campaign. As the men tucked into a traditional Sri Lankan dinner of rice, pancakes and curry, Srishena gave no indication of what he was about to do declare a candidacy that would unite the fragmented opposition in a high-risk gamble against entrenched and ruthless opponent. Before ending the bulletin, the top stories once again. First phase of Bisho Ijtama starts amid tight security. Devotees offer Juma prayers. BNP calls to continue blockade amid the Bisho Ijtama. Government to compensate people, vehicles if vandalized. 2015 to be milestone in world history, Hasina writes in Europe magazine. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us.